A carrot isn't an inherent good food, while chocolate is an inherent bad food. Food is just food. Bruh. Okay, so there is a big drama going on right now between Illimation, an animation YouTuber, and Think Before You Sleep, uh, a type of commentary YouTuber, but more uh, well thought out stuff and like sort of longer stuff. There's actually a three part saga going on right now for a whole month. And I'm gonna try to cover all of it this video, so this might be a little long. So Think Before You Sleep made a video called A Fat Acceptance Cartoon about a month ago, where he's criticizing this video by Illimation called Perks of Being the Fat Kid. Now, after this, uh, one of Illimation's friends apparently watched the video for her and then told her that it's a bad video. And then without even watching the original video, she started a mass flagging campaign on Tumblr. By the way, who the heck uses Tumblr. So yeah, basically she told all her fans to report Think Before You Sleep and get him banned and just like remove his video or whatever. So Think Before You Sleep responded, kind of panicking over here and made two more videos following up on the situation. Now, as you guys know, we here in the commentary community absolutely hate people like Illimation who literally cannot take criticism at all and just kind of resort to shutting down people's videos by striking or copywriting or flagging. Now, to my knowledge, she hasn't done any of this, but you know, a mass flagging campaign is genuinely just trying to ruin somebody's livelihood. It's just overreacting and not necessary. You can just choose to ignore the situation or you can respond with your own video. Okay, so let's go over the entire situation from start to finish, starting with the original video, Perks of Being a Fat Kid. Spoiler alert, there's actually no perks to being a fat kid. It actually sucks because you get bullied a lot. Now, basically in this video, Illimation promotes a lot of toxic body positivity where she essentially repeats what all these fat acceptance advocates always do where it's okay to be fat even if you're unhappy with it and you're actually harming yourself. It seems like she really just doesn't understand the basics of fitness and exercise like calories in calories out to lose weight and what foods you should actually eat and why. So she starts off the video talking about her experience getting bullied and you know that's sad and all but then later on she starts huffing some major copium. She says she hates how she looks and she wanted to exercise and diet to change that. But then after a couple months of trying, she fails at losing any weight and then concludes that, yeah, being fat is actually perfectly fine. And that's not the case. You just failed a weight loss and that happens to a lot of people. Just get up and try again. And that's really one of the reasons that everybody seems to love fat acceptance because it's just an easy excuse to completely give up and stop trying something that's actually pretty hard to do. So let's just go over some of the points in this video real quick. And besides, it had only been a month. Surely soon I'd know. Two months of diet and exercise, no change on the scale. And I had worked my way up to jogging a mile easily on the treadmill, doing crunches and sit-ups for a minute straight. I was even starting to match my personal trainer's strength, and we worked out side by side. Okay, so you're actually just making good progress in fitness. That That is a good thing. Now, you might be the same weight because you lost some fat and actually gained some muscle. You were probably eat eating at your maintenance calories, and you had some newbie gains. You were recomping, and you're getting leaner at the same weight. That's actually amazing. Now, if you're actually mad that you didn't lose weight, that's because you're not in a calorie deficit. It's simple as that. Now, I don't even know, need to know a single thing about you to know that that's factually true. Because if you stayed the same weight, by uh, Pegasus's law of no bullshit, you were eating at maintenance calories. For some reason, somehow, full-grown adults, right, who have hired personal trainers, nutritionists, doctors, everything, they cannot understand the simplest of logic. Nobody told her the absolute basic thing you need to know about weight loss, and that's the law of conservation of energy here. If, if you spend more the calories than you put in, you're gonna lose weight. But then three months of diet and exercise and still no change on the scale. It was so frustrating. My personal trainer asked if I was eating enough and drinking enough water, and I promised her I was. I left those unhealthy restrictive eating habits in middle school. Okay, so problem with this sort of speech where you talk in vague terms like, oh, are you eating enough? Are you drinking enough water? 
you will never actually be able to tell because that's completely relative. To one person, eating enough might be eating an X amount of food, and to another person, it might be, you know, eating five bajillion McDonald's, okay? You need to be specific. How much did you eat? How many calories? What foods did you eat? This literally isn't rocket science, and it's really frustrating that she portrays to her audience that basically, even if you exercise, even if you hire all the professionals, and even if you try your very best for months and months, you will still not lose weight. And basically, she she justifies it by saying, oh, she just has the genetics for that. She has the body type where it's just impossible to lose weight, despite her looking perfectly fine before and not being overweight at all. Just maybe this was proof that all the workouts I was doing was enough. Maybe this was proof that my body and other people's bodies don't need to be less fat to be considered healthy. Which I know sounds crazy. We've been told our entire lives that you can't be healthy if you're fat. Yet here I am at the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life, categorically overweight and well within middle school mocking range, but also the healthiest I've ever been according to multiple doctors. Okay, so I really can't trust a word she says, and I don't really trust your doctors either, because it seems like the people you're working with are saying anything to make you feel better, and so that you continue paying them. Because I spent two full years going through the healthcare system with a lot of doctors, and I kind of learned that doctors know what they specialize in, and pretty much nothing else. At least my experience is that they are horrible with fitness and nutrition, and basic life stuff. Like a, a, a literal gym bro somehow knows more about general health and nutrition than most doctors. Now, of course, an eye doctor will be an ex expert on your eyes, a gut doctor will be an expert on your gut, but what foods to eat and how to lose weight and how to keep fit, shockingly, they actually just know jack shit. Now, of course, some doctors are awesome, but most in my experience are l like criminally illiterate. Like there are people with 10 years in the medical field and they don't know basic things about calories in, calories out, and micronutrients is genuinely one of the most baffling things I've experienced. And uh, it, it really shocked me just going through the whole process. Now, she says that you don't need to be less fat to be considered healthy. Well, there's a range, okay? As you said from like the start of your video, you were like unhappy with your appearance and you wanted to change it. You've completely shifted the goalposts here like this was all about your appearance it was nothing to do with health you were just like i didn't like how i looked listen the fact of the matter is despite what all these doctors are saying to lose weight all she had to do was eat the exact same things that she usually does even if it was like literal mcdonald's and ice cream and subtract one thing from that and subtract one ice cream or subtract one thing that's like 200 to 500 calories and do that for like a month. And if you don't lose weight, I don't know, man, take it up with fucking Julius Robert Von Mayer. Uh, that's the love uh, <laughs> conservation of energy guy, I think. Well, actually, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. Basically, you're bullshitting yourself and you're bullshitting everybody, okay? A carrot isn't an inherent good food, while chocolate is an inherent bad food. Food is just food. No matter how many calories, carbs, sugars, you should feel free to eat whatever food you want to without beating yourself up about it. Did one of your professional doctors tell you this? Was, it, was, the, was the nutritionist the one that told you that carrots and chocolates are the same? I can't believe a full grown adult actually believes this dumb shit. Here's a fact. Chocolate is high in sugar and saturated fat and has a lot of calories and a low nutritional value compared to a carrot. Carrots are good sources of fiber, vi vitamins, uh, antioxidants. They're low in calories. Now, does this make carrots better than chocolates? In most cases, yeah. Yeah, it actually does. I, I saw a lot of people saying, well, actually, all food is the same. No, you fucking idiot. Of course, all food's not the same. Now, they'll obviously bring up some fringe cases, of course, yeah. Some person with specific dietary needs will benefit from a chocolate over a carrot. Maybe somebody has zero sugar in their diet and they need some energy or something. Maybe they need to gain weight. Maybe they're malnourished and they need to run a mile in, in the next 10 seconds or their family dies. Yes, the chocolate will probably fuel them better than a carrot, okay? Yeah, in those situations, I get it. But for 99% of the population, most of the time, 
eat a carrot over a chocolate any day of the week, dude. When we say better, we don't mean in like every single case imaginable. We say in most general cases. That's how you like define things usually. We're talking about nutrient rich foods in general. Okay, so that was the original video and Think Before You Sleep made a similar criticism video, except he went a little bit further and he might have gotten a little bit personal. Alyssa talks down about her appearance a lot in her videos. This is despite having decent features like strawberry blonde hair, blue eyes, and vibrant skin. She could easily be considered attractive by most people if she just stopped wearing those grandma glasses, picked better clothes, learned how to style her hair instead of always leaving it flat to her head with maximum forehead showing, and watched some makeup tutorials. With that said, Alyssa gave us two things that she didn't want people to focus on. One was her weight and the other was her legs. Well, all that weird stuff going on in the middle of her dress immediately causes me to focus on her stomach, and the overall design of the dress ends up making her look bigger than she actually is. How do you draw people for a living but don't know fashion? This girl has millions of followers, yet if you saw her out in public, you'd be afraid that she's about to pester you for spare change. She has the fashion sense and physical self-awareness of Abby Shapiro. Okay, so not gonna lie, it, it is a little bit harsh, okay? But he does give her props as well. He says that she's a good looking girl, right? But if you ask me, th it's truly what she needs to hear, you know, a little bit of constructive criticism here and definitely doesn't fall under like harassment or bullying and definitely doesn't warrant somebody mass flagging your channel and removing your video for this. I feel like that's definitely an overreaction and that is definitely just deplatforming. I mean, plenty of people engage in back and forth discussions on YouTube like I've got in my fair share of dramas as well there's so much shit that goes on on YouTube and usually we just kind of move on we move on from the situation okay nobody nobody gets so upset over these type of things people have said random shit about everybody they lie about everybody whatever but it's not a reason to get obsessive over it especially if you didn't like watch the video so let's move on to think before you sleep's first response to the whole situation a few days ago I made a video about a YouTuber who goes by Illimation or Alyssa where I basically spent 30 minutes saying, I don't like your video, and here's why. A thing that many YouTubers do. I've criticized other YouTubers, other YouTubers have criticized me, sometimes we have a little internet battle, those are fun, and by the end of it, everyone moves on with their life after about a week or two. Except Alyssa. Earlier, I received an email from a follower giving a well-detailed description about how Alyssa is trying to get me a channel strike because she didn't like a video that she admits to not even watching. If you didn't watch it, how do you know what's in it? Well, a friend of hers told her it was bad. Okay, so this is an absolute classic. I mean, if you want a video taken down, the absolute least you could do is at least watch the video and confirm the reason you're so mad about it. You're literally just going off uh, on what some white knight fan told you about this or your friend or whatever. If you just read this, yes, I didn't watch it. A friend did though and gave me a rundown. I advise others not to watch the video or his channel either. Do not engage. Do not in red. Do not give him a single second of watch time or ad revenue. Oh boy, that is, <laughs> that is spiteful. You know, the problem with this is that you literally tell people not even to watch his video. So they can't even confirm if what you're saying is actually true or not. They just have to, uh, you know, go by your uh, assessment of the situation. You can't even let people watch the material and come to their own conclusion. Like if they're a fan of you and they watch the video and they don't like it, they're going to they're going to, you know, report it for you or whatever, because, you know, that would be fair. But if I recall correctly, if you go to his comment section, there's a lot of Illimation fans basically saying that, yeah, she's totally overreacting. And yeah, that was like a poorly made video and all that. So it was it's her own fans basically turning on here. And this is kind of like a cult leader thinking, OK, you know, no free thinking allowed. Just listen to me. You know, one of the facts of uh, putting out content on the Internet is that you're going to get criticized whether you like it or not. That's just kind of part and parcel of being a public YouTuber or getting famous on the internet. And criticism is allowed. It's kind of central to having a healthy community. I mean, look at my community. They pretty much mauled every video. At least somebody mauls every video in the comment section because I have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, specific opinions that people don't like. Now, do I silence them, turn off comments and never address them ever to avoid criticism? Of course not. OK, some of them you can actually learn and grow from, take the good criticism and just ignore the people who are just bullshitting, you know? Considering that in this post, you stated that your market is children. Do you really think this is being a good role model? Telling people to stick their head in the sand, not listen to feedback, and use dirty tactics against anyone who criticizes them? By trying to deplatform a smaller creator, all you've done is make yourself look bad, 
and legitimize the claims that your opponent made against you. Okay, so this is basically the Streisand effect happening again. Uh, she tried to flag his video, take it down, and what actually happened, he got double or triple his usual views. He got to make three videos on it when he would have only made one if he didn't do this whole flagging thing. And now, the entire community, completely unrelated YouTubers such as myself, are <laughs> responding to the situation because, you know, it's, uh, it's something to talk about and that's my job, baby. It's just a, such a classic. People never understand this. If you get into controversy, do not try to silence criticism. It will literally backfire. Because there's one thing YouTubers absolutely hate, and that's people trying to take down their videos because, you know, you put a lot of effort into these. That's not harassment, Alyssa. That's called criticism. Plot twist, the actual harasser was Alyssa as she called upon her followers to mass flag a video that she didn't even watch. How did she know what the video contained? Well, a friend watched it for her, told her what was in it in a very misleading way, and today we have found that this is that friend. His name is Dylan, he won an award for being hater of the year, and now he's throwing a tantrum over the follow-up video that I made on Illymation that basically said, hey, maybe it's a little fucked up to go after someone's livelihood because they said a thing you didn't like. Okay, so now this newest video talks about the white knight friend that apparently watched the video for Illumination here, right? Telling her it's such a bad video and to mass flag this guy. Now, keep in mind, Dylan is the biggest loser in this entire situation. Probably, like, even more than Illumination, I would say. Because this guy is literally that guy that uh, causes conflict wherever he goes, right? He's that guy in the friend group who whispers lies into other people's ears or whatever. He's like the gossip girl, right? He'll talk shit about you to your other friend. Basically, the way he represented Think Before You Sleep's video was disingenuous and biased, and he just kind of lies about the whole thing. Basically, puts words into Think Before You Sleep's mouth, and he also has the infamous clout disease, as we'll see. Take a look at this. Next, Alyssa's friend Dylan goes on to recap the events for the audience in a totally not biased way, and then shows the entire commentary that he gave on my video, uncensored, full Discord name, anime girl avatar and all, so that we know that he in fact was the mysterious friend that Alyssa was referring to in her Tumblr post. Look at him go. So proud that he made it into a YouTube video. Hey Dylan, do you know what a great way to not draw attention to this would be? Publicly stating on Twitter, Hey everyone, I just want to make sure that you know it was me who wrote this. I want the credit for it. Oh my god, dude, I can't believe this happens to other people as well. This is like, it's such a classic. They say, don't mention me, don't bring me hate or whatever, when in reality, these people are giggling and peeing in their pants, just, you know, being mentioned by a famous YouTuber. It, it's just happened so many times where people pretend to be mad in my video, and they make like a 500 tweets drawing attention to it. We know that this is the only attention you'll ever get, buddy. Just calm down, holy shit. This is, this is giving me flashbacks. <laughs> now, after this... Dylan pulls the absolute trifecta of classics. He just calls him a misogynist to discredit anything he says. Dylan then proceeds to do what all these people do because they're lazy, which is look at a bunch of titles and thumbnails and assume they know what's in the video instead of actually watching it. Ironically, these are the same people who will say, don't judge a book by its cover. Oh no, there's a bunch of women in the thumbnails. I guess he only talks about women, which must mean he hates them. Hey look Dylan, I found another misogynistic channel that exclusively puts women in the thumbnails. How terrible that women are the only thing that this YouTuber talks about. Never mind that if you actually watch these videos, you can see that quite a number of them are about men or were made in defense of women. This one here is about a bunch of ESG filled big tech companies taking a woman named Grace Hopper, who was actually strong and actually very good at her job, and using her name to promote meritless diversity hiring that she would most certainly be against. Way to piss on the grave of a person who actually knew what she was doing and actually made people respect women in tech. Okay, so this sort of behavior will happen all the time. These people kind of just see exactly what they want to see and frame it the way that fits their narrative. So everybody gets this sort of criticism in this community where you make a couple videos on women, you're suddenly a misogynist. Make 15 videos on guys in a row, not a single comment will ever say misandrous because that's not even in internet people's vocabulary. They don't give a if you make 500 videos on guys in a row, it's almost like people in this community, in like the commentary community, do not give a single shit 
if you are a guy or a girl. It's basically this. I'll I'll, I'll tell you the the whole scoop of how everybody here gets our topics, okay? Because we're all in cahoots apparently. If somebody does something stupid on the internet, it goes viral on either TikTok, Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, wherever, okay, or Shorts or whatever. We see something stupid, we're like, okay, this would make a good video topic. We talk about it. Now this might be 50 girls in a row, or it might be 50 guys in a row. Get over it, okay? It's just maybe look at what the person is actually doing in the video. Maybe look at their actions and judge it based on that. And maybe look at people past their gender or race. You shouldn't be counting. Okay, this, this amount of videos on a white person, this amount of pieces. Uh, when do you actually have not made a video on a Chinese person? I guess you're racist towards Asians. That's not how it works. Jesus Christ. Anyways, this is basically the drama summed up. Uh, that was probably really long or whatever. But you know, moral of the story, just, I don't know, take criticism better and stop trying to take down people's videos, especially if you haven't watched it. That's got to be so frustrating. Anyways, you can't spell illumination without multiple L's, baby. Got them. All right. That should be it, guys. Bye-bye.